Hi everybody, I'm Sean Farquhar and welcome to my YouTube channel All About Magic. Uh, today we're not going to run the trailer, uh, just to see if it makes a difference. I worked hard on the trailer, I think it's really cool, uh, but m m maybe it was a waste of my time. Uh, maybe some of you liked it. Uh, some of you comment that you liked it and there was only a few people that said, hey, it seems like it's uh, too much. Uh, so uh, to all you people that are new to the channel, uh, go watch one of my other videos and then you'll figure out who I am if you don't already. Uh, today, uh, this video is a little different than most. Normally I just uh, uh, pound away at you with magic tricks and really bad dad jokes. Uh, but this week was kind of a, a crappy week for me. Um, a friend of mine lost his little brother. Uh, another friend of mine lost his son. And I lost my uh, adopted magical dad, uh, Obi O'Brien, who passed away on September 11th. Um, for those that don't know, Obi uh, was the co-creator of Fector's Finger Flicking Frolic, the 4F convention. And he was a, a wonderful man. Uh, he was a magician, a mathematician. Uh, he was a coach, uh, uh, a referee. Uh, uh, he was part of the team for the uh, Miracle Hockey uh, when... Uh, uh, the United States beat Russia. Uh, it, it, he, he had a very amazing life, and um, uh, he changed mine. Uh, he opened doors for me all over the world. He invited me to be part of the uh, 4F family, and um, um, it, it's it's a special group of magicians. It's an invitation-only gathering of um, uh, not just the finest close-up magicians in the world, but some of the finest people. Uh, in the world of magic. Um, I know there are smaller gatherings, that, uh, but a lot of them have pompous idiots in them, and I wouldn't want to belong to them. But um, 4F is just one of those gatherings that's absolutely perfect. It's like going to a family reunion. Yeah, we got a couple of crazy uncles and one person that you don't want to... No, uh, there really is a great group of people. Uh, so um, I'm kind of... Um, uh, uh, trying to feel better and happier, even though um, it, it's, it, yeah. Uh, so I'm just trying to keep my mind off things. Uh, my new rule is going to be, when do I produce videos for YouTube? Uh, I plan to do them every Monday, um, but I'm not sure that's a great great deal. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Every time a video hits over 3,000, uh, the new video, then, then I'll produce another video. Uh, that way, I know people are watching it. If it doesn't go over 3,000, then I can just stop and sit back and, and chill. Uh, but every time a video goes over 3,000 views, uh, I'll, I'll make another video. That's the way it'll be. Uh, most of my videos, I do magic tricks or I um, um, I, I tell bad jokes. Uh, I've done a couple of book reviews. Uh, today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, first, though, I am going to mention this. I just bought this. Got it on Amazon. It's Bullet Catch, Smoke and Dagger, Book 1 by Scott Jenkins. Scott Jenkins is a magician. I've only met Scott a couple of times, uh, but he's a real genuine guy. Uh, I, I enjoy his post on uh, uh, social media. And uh, this is uh, the first in a series of books. Uh, it's a mystery magic uh, with CIA, and, and it, I think it's loosely based around if uh, Mark and Nanny Darnell, um, uh, uh, Mark Wilson and Nanny Darnell uh, were magicians uh, and spies at the same time. So I'm, I'm really looking to uh, sink my teeth into this book. I'll tell you what it's like uh, when I finish it. Um, that could be a little while. Um, because I got a lot on my plate right now. Uh, Hidden Wonders is open, and I'm doing like uh, seven shows a week, and they're sold out. They're sold out for all of September and uh, most of October. It's it's crazy good, uh, but sold out isn't a lot of people. But it's still great, and um, we're doing it really safe. 50% uh, uh, audiences and uh, masks uh, indoors, and you can only attend if you have at least one vaccination shot for now. Soon the government's going to make it so that we have to have two vaccination shots and uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, so that's right around the corner. Uh, what are we going to do today? Uh, first, I'm going to uh, take a look at this. Uh, this is Eagle One. Uh, this is a deck of cards that was given to me, gifted to me, uh, by a gentleman by the name of Ridvan. I'm going to really screw up his last name. Maliki, I think. M-A-L-I-Q-I. -I. Uh, Ridvan uh, is from Albania. And on Instagram, I saw a photograph of his deck of cards. And uh, uh, he, he wrote me to say... Uh, how cool on Instagram and uh, asked me if I would like a deck of the cards. And I was uh, very excited to say yes, uh, because I recognized uh, the image that was on the deck of cards. Well, a guy in advance, you know, a smart guy would have like opened them in advance, but I, I'm, I'm not doing them do right on camera because I think that's cooler. Uh, this, oh yes, that's it. Uh, I recognized this when I saw the picture. They were all spread out in a really nice fan. Uh, this is half the flag of Albania. And, uh, uh, Albanian national flag, which is very cool, uh, which is why I think it's called eagle, because that's like a, an eagle on there. Look at that. 
Ooh, those are very cool. And, uh, oh, they're very smooth. Very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Ooh. Uh, congratulations on uh, producing your first deck cards. These cards are manufactured in an environment with a 50 to 55% relative humidity. If you open the deck in a room with significantly less humidity, the cards may begin to react to this by bending. While drawing, this is natural and phenomenal. will disappear within 48 hours. This is really cool. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is explaining about the card uh, from Olsen AB uh, in Sweden. Swiss, Sweden. Offison. Offison. Um, uh, every deck of Anglo cards, Anglo cards, is checked and packed by hand in a box. I don't think I've handled Anglo cards before. Uh, I'm not a giant uh, card aficionado like you think I would. Oh, look at the Ace of Spades. It's tiny. The Ace of Spades is tiny. It's not a big Ace of Spades. It's it's tiny. And um, uh, these are cool. All 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 the uh, 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 pips are tiny. Oh, and 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 uh, the court cards are cool. Uh, very modern. Uh, very unique. Uh, oh, still keeping the uh, orb. That's important. I like that. Uh, the diamonds. Uh, the diamonds are sideways. Do uh, you see that? They're they're not the way I see diamonds. I, I we usually see diamonds that way. They, these are they're very very interesting. I think that's very cool. Uh, and uh, it appears that all the uh, uh, court cards are different faces, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, uh, I want to go to the uh, King of Hearts. Oh, King of Hearts, King of Hearts does not have a sword running through his head. That's interesting. That uh, uh, very untraditional. Uh, and Queen of Hearts. Oh, the Queen of Hearts has a like she's holding a rose, but it's got a heart. These are really pretty cards. Um, and uh, actually, I've seen Office and Cards before. As soon as I saw the logo there, I own decks of cards. Um, uh, in fact, uh, the decks of cards that were made uh, for FISM in 2006 uh, were printed by this company. Uh, sorry, it just popped in my head. Uh, so I, I've, I've seen these cards before. I've seen this style. Um, well, not these cards, but uh, cards printed by those people. Uh, they get a nice feel. Uh, they're not super thick. Uh, they're really crisp. And uh, yeah, oh, I like them. So uh, these are really pretty. Uh, this is the first deck I'm opening. I'm not giving reviews going, oh, I think they're amazing and uh, you should go buy them. In fact, uh, I, I'm not going to promote any of them that way. Uh, I just wanted to open some decks. Uh, I have um, probably a thousand decks of cards in my house and most of them are unopened, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, but I, 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 I thought it'd be fun to open a few uh, just to see um, how they are. Oh that's, oh, that's good. Yeah, took a little bit. Very nice. Yeah, uh, a little swishing to the side, but much better on the second one. Oh, these are cool, and uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they, they warp as suggested. Um, that'll be kind of a neat thing to see. Uh, yeah, knew I wasn't going to get it. Uh, my eyes are really tired. Uh, I, I've been tired. They, I got these too. I got this deck of cards. This is Howling Jack playing cards. Uh, this was a thing on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, uh, they were supposed to be affordable uh, cards that would be everyday affordable cards. Um, uh, the fellows had some amazing success. I, I, I won't profess to know who they are or anything, uh, but uh, I just uh, I wanted to support some Kickstarter stuff. And so this is one of those open box shuffle cards, Blow Minds. Ooh. And uh, so it's got a. I love that decks of cards have this. Um, I am so disappointed when I buy decks of cards and you have to like uh, peel to get into them. No, no stickers. No stickers on either of these boxes. I think a sticker uh, is, is really cool. And uh, well, that's interesting. This one doesn't open up uh, all the way. It just, just opens to there. doesn't have that. Normally they have that, that little extra bend. Uh, that little, oh, this one didn't either. Oh, that's interesting. So both of them. And this one has some sort of little uh, peak thing right there. I don't know what that is. See that little opening? Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm used to cards having that little bend right there. Aren't you used to? Yeah. Uh, and so this deck of cards, just like that one's going to be a little bit hard to get at. Very good. And, oh, Ace of Spades. Look at that. Oh, see? From the little tiny Ace of Spades to the giant Ace of Spades. Uh, and these run uh, Ace, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King, and then, oh, and that goes into Hearts. Well, that's interesting. Uh, then Hearts. And uh, and then into clubs. Oh, it, it's uh, not doing reverse order. Uh, it's even more interesting. Oh, and then the Jokers on one end. Uh, these are the guys who I think designed and promoted them and everything. Uh, I wish I knew them, but I don't. And uh, a three of diamonds. Uh, an extra three of diamonds. 
Is that, uh, is that, uh, yeah. It comes with an extra three of diamonds. I don't know why. Uh, if you know why, put the comment down below why it came with extra three diamonds. And, and look, there's a misprint. One of the cards was printed with a back on both sides. Wow, that's very, okay. Uh, so a double backer and uh, three of diamonds is an extra card. Um, let's see how these uh, fan. Um, yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, they feel thick. Uh, they feel thicker than a normal deck of cards. Um, this isn't a normal deck of cards, but if I put them against them, is it really, is that just me? No, it's not just me. Look, there's a, a lot of extra cards on the top. Um, why is that? This one had jokers, right? Oh, maybe it didn't have the two advertising cards. Oh, no, it did because I had two jokers. And there's the two jokers. And then it had... Uh, um, uh, it had three jokers. It had three jokers and that informational card. Uh, so there are 56 cards in this deck. And then with the, this deck, uh, there are 56. And um, they are significantly different in height. Like that's by like about six cards. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, so these are uh, trash and burn cards. And they're your everyday card. And uh, finish feels a little dry on them but uh, I love the artwork look at this uh, where are they uh, that one look at that I was looking that's a king of diamonds and a queen of diamonds and a jack of diamonds it's like a raccoon a fox and uh, a bear it's a bear and are they all the same because uh, the, the other one didn't look like that one oh yeah oh they're all different look the bear these are kind of cool I like the idea it's like um, the animals you'd find in your trash can right uh, 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 roaming through your trash can uh, and there, there's your trash can on fire a burning trash can uh, uh, the back design is very cool though that's very cool that's what attracted me to them uh, but they're, they're yeah they're, um, okay so uh, that's the second deck of cards and the third one uh, would be this one um, <laughs> yeah. hidden wonders Quality playing cards. Look at that. Elegant edition. Oh, uh, on the side it says uh, Speakeasy Magic Experience. The other side has the hiddenwonders.ca. Uh, the back of the cards. Uh, there's no sticker because this is a sample and uh, somehow they forgot to include the sticker. Uh, so, uh, uh, but this has a tear tab. Tear tabs are important. Tear tabs are very important. Inside uh, uh, is the deck of cards uh, and. Uh, uh, please uh, fold over. Yeah, see, that's what I'm used to. I'm used to that little fold over piece there so I can grab the deck of cards easily to remove them. Uh, that's important. Uh, oh, look at that joker. That's a cool looking joker. Yeah, and then the other joker should look the other way. See, I didn't want to be the same joker. I wanted to be a different joker. It's very cool. That's, uh, that's cool. And then uh, Ace of Hearts. Okay, this is the first time I'm opening the deck. Uh, that seems wrong. That should be the Ace of Spades. I did make the Pip Pig. I was inspired by uh, uh, Christian from uh, uh, Card Shark, uh, the Phoenix cards. I really like the bigger one because I do shape my heart. Oh, maybe they thought because I do shape my heart that I want the card there. But no, 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 no. I would want them in traditional. On this end, I have, to, I have a blank face card. And then a misprint. See, there's one with a, a double backer. Ooh, yeah. So those are kind of cool. Uh, so the uh, two jokers, a uh, double backer, and a blank card. Uh, and then the uh, deck of cards. Ooh, let's try that. Yeah. Uh, I went for a uh, linen finish. Oh, very nice. I went for a linen finish, uh, and I wanted the cards to be soft. Uh, the feeling of the card uh, to be... Oh, there's your ace of spades. So I can show it to you. There's, there's the ace of spades. I wanted it to be um, as close as I could get to stud playing cards. So this is a very uh, light, uh, thin card. It's not thick uh, like a bicycle card with that uh, uh, crunchy uh, double. Uh, there, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, there's one, and there's two. You can hear that, and then you hear that. that this is a very soft card. Uh, my card looks a little... Uh, off-white compared to the other one. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the, uh, the the Ace of Spades. Isn't that cool? Uh, Num Custom Mysteria. That's Latin for uh, Keeper of Secrets. Uh, at least I hope it is. Uh, that's to, see, now they're in running order. And then, no, they're not. Uh, okay. And, oh, yep, yeah, they have the, the Kissing Kings in the middle. And then going back, uh, but they have them in the wrong order. 
uh, exactly in reverse of what a deck of cards uh, should be. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Uh, I, I would like the deck to be restacked. Uh, they probably just didn't think it just did it in, a, in an order. Uh, the deck should be. This is nice. They're very nice. Oh, they feel nice. Very good. They should be in that order. See, new deck order. Ace of Spades. Yeah, see, those fan nicely. Yeah. Oh, they're fine. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see if I can shoot one again. Oh, that wasn't very good either. And I'm not going to um, edit that. Am I? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'll try that again. Uh, Ace of Spades on the front. Uh, it's. Uh, did I mention it's 2.30 in the morning? Yeah, that's nice. Uh, maybe I can do it again. Nope, didn't get it. Let's see if I get these hearts. This is fun now. I did this in another video, I know. Yeah. Oh, there we go. At least I got it. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, my uh, uh, first sample of uh, Hidden Wonders uh, cards. Um, and they feel nice. Uh, to be honest, they feel thick, though. Like the, the, the deck seems a little uh, bigger, uh, which would be really surprising to me considering the cards are soft. Cards, because the cards are soft, uh, that means the stock is thinner. And because the stock is thinner, it should mean the deck should be, if anything, thinner. I was hoping it would be exactly the same. Uh, but let me put them up against uh, this deck of cards, and we'll just see. Uh, they look much closer. Uh, let's put them up against these. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see those ones are really... Oh, but there are four cards missing from this one, right? Right. Uh, there's uh, uh, these four. Uh, so with those four on top, and uh, let's take a bicycle deck. I'll put the bicycle deck up against it. This is my scientific experiment. Um, I am right. Uh, there are more cards. Look at that. that. That's insane. How is that possible that uh, that deck of cards has about... One, two, three, four, five. About six cards um, thicker than a bicycle deck of cards. Uh, all right. Um, this means uh, what's on Sean's desk today? Uh, I have one of these. Uh, yeah, I can measure this. Um, I will put it to the end and I will measure. Oh, this is fun. Uh, this is um, a 0 0.72, 0 0.72. That's what it read, 0.72. I guess I could have shown you. And, uh, but if I do that, then I can't see it. And this one is 0. Uh, 0.66. Well, look at that, 0. Uh, 0. 0.72.66. Uh, let me put those in between again and uh, measure the thickness. Uh, oh, okay, there we go, 0. 0.74. But still, uh, that's 0. 0.74 uh, without the box. And this is 0. Uh, 6, 6, 5. Uh, so there is a significant difference in the thickness of um, the two decks of cards. And I don't know how that's... Maybe you have an idea on how it is. Uh, but uh, uh, they do feel like I have more cards in my hand than I would like to. Uh, so this may uh, not be the final. Boy, they feel nice, though. Um, the finish is nice. They're soft. It just feels a little thick. Uh, do you like the back? Is the back beautiful? I think the back is beautiful. It's a one-way deck uh, on the face and the back um, and with my Hidden Wonder logos. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I got a small collection of them. Uh, these are samples. They basically cost $50 a deck to have samples made. It's insane. Absolutely insane. That's, that's no joke. $50. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, that's the opening of three decks of cards. I hope you found that fun. Uh, the rest of this video, uh, no magic. Um, I'm going to answer questions. Uh, and uh, at the uh, somewhere in amongst all these questions, I will have the draw uh, from the last video. I was giving away a t-shirt uh, that said, um, got to find new haters. The old ones are starting to like me. And I asked if you uh, put a comment in the video that I put all your names in. So I found a randomizer program uh, that I can put the video from YouTube in. I can click the button and it will uh, generate a winner. And so I'll do that and we can uh, have some fun with that. I may have to cut and, and uh, screen capture that and then come back to this. Uh, but uh, Or I'll put it at the end. Or I'll do it after I shoot the video and then I'll edit it into the video. That sounds like a good idea. I'm going to cough now. <coughs>
All right, uh, let's answer a couple of questions. I really do try to answer all the questions uh, in the comments, uh, but today, uh, just for fun, uh, let's do it and see if uh, uh, people like this idea. Uh, the first one comes from uh, King O. Dot K, and it says, "What is the name of your favorite ungimmicked trick? Uh, what is the name of your favorite gimmick trick? And what is the name of the first trick you did?" Uh, was it a special delivery for a great trick? So that was the uh, um, caveat that they had to write the word special delivery in the comment uh, to be eligible for the contest. And so this this comment is coming from just the last video. And several people made comments and had no interest in uh, uh, winning a prize. They just wanted to comment, which is cool too. Uh, to answer your question, what is the name of your favorite ungimmick trip? Uh, Shape of My Heart. Uh, definitely. It uses just a regular deck of cards, a beautiful piece of music. It has a lot of emotional impact. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it on my YouTube channel. It was filmed in like the 1990s uh, with a potato, apparently. People have actually made comments saying it was it filmed with a potato. And it, it was a russet potato, uh, which has, you know, a couple of really sharp eyes on it. Yeah. Uh, but Shape of My Heart. Uh, what is the name of uh, your favorite gimmick card trick? Well, that would be uh, Unwritten. Uh, Unwritten uh, uses a very special deck of cards that was uh, manufactured and printed uh, for me uh, by Christian uh, from Cardshark, uh, cardshark.de. Uh, they produce the uh, phenomenal uh, uh, deck of cards, the Phoenix, and he uh, saw me doing a performance at the 4F convention that I talked about earlier, and uh, I had calligraphied on cards some words and uh, he knew that uh, what wasn't going to suffice. I went out and I bought from some make a card place someplace in uh, Asia a uh, deck of cards, but the quality was really crap. And uh, uh, I performed it at uh, 4F and he said I really needed a good deck of cards and so he printed them. So it's a completely deck of cards, that completely gimmick deck of cards because it's all made of playing cards that look like sheets of old parchment paper with wonderful lettering on it and it uh, follows the lyrics of a Natasha Bedingfield song and it, it's re really cool. Uh, I'd say it's my second favorite thing. Uh, Hidden Wonders, uh, performing uh, Shape of My Heart, number one thing in the whole world. Uh, I used to do Unwritten uh, when I performed in the uh, Wave Band Lounge uh, on the Disney Wonder, and it was way cool there. Um, yeah, two, two good things. Uh, the third was, what is the name of the first trick you did? Uh, first trick I ever did. Uh, uh, it was the vanishing of a banana in a flip over box. My dad built the box for me. I'd done lots of magic, you know, uh, for just for the family. But the first time I did a performance for anybody, um, my friends, Pat McMahon, Greg Fielding, uh, oh, uh, who else was there? Tommy Banks, uh, uh, Wilth Rutherford, uh, uh, we all uh, kind of hung out together and decided we were going to put on a big magic show. And so we curtained off the uh, uh, backyard of my parents' place. We lived in uh, PMQs, that's uh, post-marital quarters, uh, military. And they had uh, wooden fences that went high with slats in them. And we put uh, bed sheets around and then charged a nickel for kids to come in and see the show. And uh, I had a box with two holes in the end, opened up, put a banana inside, flipped the box, it flipped over, and the banana was gone. It was very cool. Then I closed it back up, found the banana again. Uh, Greg took and did his ninja cutting with his hand and then opened the banana to see the banana had all been sliced. Yeah. Uh, okay, we were really young, so you, you got to give us, you know, that. Uh, so what's the next question we're going to ask? Uh, question, what are the top three best tricks you ever saw on Fool Us other than yourself? Yeah, well, I wouldn't have picked myself anyways. Uh, you can answer this. That would be great. A real special delivery in my email. Ah, see? Uh, another person playing that special delivery game. Um, uh, thanks for answering the question. Prince Gastronome. Oh, that's very good. Gastronomy. It's like a... Gastronomy. Yeah. It's like a... a uh, eating, right? Yeah. Uh, forgive me, I'm an idiot. Um, three best tricks I've ever seen. You know, one of the ones that uh, still kills me to this day uh, is Nicholas Einhorn. In season number one, Nicholas Einhorn had three specters, spectators come up. They sat at the table of their choice. They selected um, uh, platters uh, with food, uh, all to the choice, and he made all the predictions. And it was, it was, it was killer good. It fooled the crap out of me. And it still does to this very day. Uh, what's really cool is uh, Nicholas is this brilliant magician in uh, 2003. Yeah, 2003. Oh, my heavens. 2003, 17 years ago, we competed against each other uh, at the FISM in the Netherlands at uh, The Hague. And uh, we tied for second prize. And I couldn't have tied with somebody better than him. He, he was brilliant. And uh, uh, did an amazing act back then with a, a signed card and a bottle of wine. 
It was very cool. Uh, so did Etienne Pradier. He also uh, had a sign card in a bottle of wine that year. And a lot of magicians uh, made a shoe appear. It, it, was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, but uh, that, that'd be the number one uh, on my list of uh, really cool things that I've seen on Penn and Tellus Fool Us. What other magicians? Uh, can I be honest? I don't watch the show all the time. I, I watch the YouTube videos only because the, the show does not air uh, where I am uh, uh, regularly. It did for a while, and then I lost the CW network because I, I got rid of my satellite. Uh, and um, I've gone to Shaw Cable, which uh, I get like uh, 12 free stations. That's it. But that's because um, I, I didn't want to watch a lot of TV all the time. Uh, who else do I really like? I've seen so many good ones on there. Uh, I'm going to answer that with one. Yeah, Nicholas Einhorn. Uh, how about that, Nick? Oh, uh, I love John Archer. John Archer. That was in the pilots uh, before the show started. Uh, John Archer was on it, and uh, uh, he did his bank night routine. Oh, freaking amazing. Uh, really cool. Um, there have been so many good ones. Do you know, that's what's so great, is it's really hard to pick uh, uh, one or two. I pick the ones from really early because they're the ones that set in my mind. But uh, Penn and Teller's Foolish is just such a celebration of great magic. There is so much good magic on it that it makes it uh, really, really tough uh, to pick. Um, if you'd asked me which ones I didn't like, that would have been so much easier. I really disliked them when they put big, heavy red herrings in uh, to to suck Penn and Teller in, and uh, or uh, uh, you know um, uh, pretend to have something or fake a move, or if they do twenty five tricks and hope that one of them is going to stick. Those those type of acts drive me insane. Um, it, not cool at all. Or or when they win because of a technicality or a stooge that. That is, yeah, that stuff bugs me. Uh, I'm going to move on because I don't want to get uh, in trouble. Uh, but uh, at least I named two, right? I'm sorry that I don't name a third one. Uh, there are so many choices. Oh, uh, hey, we could. It could be that young lady just recently did the uh, really brilliant costume changes. Uh, um, she was very cool. Yeah, that could be a good one. I like that one. All right, what else? Next one. Is that Stephen Bargatze? You mentioned the comedian Nate Bargatze's father. He's a great big comic uh, now, and he often mentions his father. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Stephen Bargatze, whose products are all released through Palmer Magic, um, his dear friend and the um, immediate past president of the International Brotherhood of Magicians, uh, his son is Nate Bargatze, and Nate is brilliant and uh, uh, super funny, uh, just like his father. Uh, in fact, his father took us to see him do a corporate gig when we we were in Las Vegas. We were in Las Vegas together, and uh, his son came into town to do a private corporate gig, and we all snuck in, went to the green room, uh, hung out. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever met Nate, only time I've ever met Nate, and he was so genuine, so nice, and uh, he showed some of his friends some uh, magic tricks, and it, it, it was cool. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a giant Nate Bargatze fan uh, and a huge Stephen Bargatze fan. A uh, funny story, my daughter Hannah uh, was binge watching Netflix. Uh, this is a, a couple years ago now. And she said, uh, we used to have these nights where we would watch a comedian. She'd find somebody great and we'd watch them. Our favorite comedian in the entire world is a gentleman by the name of Fred Klett. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, John Mulaney and uh, Hannah came downstairs and said, Dad, you have to watch. Uh, and Bo Burnham. She loves Bo Burnham. Uh, he, she came downstairs, Dad, you have to watch this guy. This guy is funny. He's clean. He's funny. Um, he's not condescending. He's just funny. And I was like, okay, let's watch. Who is it? And she said, Nate Bargatze. And I started laughing. She goes, oh, you've seen him? And I'm like, Say the name again. She goes, Nate Barkett. Oh, she goes, wait, Barkett. Wait, does he know Stephen? It was like just such a great moment. It was like, uh, yeah, it was really cool. So yes, uh, that, that's a good answer. Easy question for me to answer. Uh, you're my second favorite magician. Very charismatic. Well, that's not a question. Uh, why did they put, I didn't prepare these, by the way. Uh, they were pulled out for me. Uh, but I have a question. If I'm your second favorite magician, uh, who's your first? Uh, please put in your comments. Uh, that's uh, Avalit. A-B-L-E-I-T-E. -E. Uh, I'm going to have the graphics come up uh, right there so you guys can uh, look at them and uh, then, then you can see the people. Uh, what is a spectator failure? Oh, I mentioned a spectator failure. Uh, that's any time uh, you make it look like the spectator has made the mistake and then you have to recover from it. I'm not a fan of spectator failure. Uh, I think that if anything goes wrong, it should be you. Uh, I have moments where, you know, I say one of the two of us has done something wrong, me who does this for a living, or, or you, you know, 
card boy. Uh, and, and it's meant as a joke. And I immediately uh, correct myself and say, no, this is my job. It's not your job. You're here to have fun. So if anything goes wrong, it's obviously my fault, even if you screwed it up. Uh, a great example of bad spectator failure, but it still gets a great laugh. It's just, are all laughs great laughs? Or are laughs sometimes big, but not great? Um, it's a really great topic for a conversation on magicians. Uh, so uh, here's an example. Uh, you hand the person the deck of cards, and you say, on the throw those cards into the air. And they throw them in the air, and you say, on the count of three. Uh, it's embarrassing for the person. But everybody laughs. Uh, unless you have a really great way to get out of it, and unless you take all the heat, uh, you're a jerk. Uh, I'll admit, I've done the, I've done that joke a thousand times. And it gets a huge laugh. Uh, but I work really hard uh, to turn it around and say, no, it's my fault. It's totally my fault. Don't worry. Uh, you know, and not the, no, it's my fault. I picked you. It, it that That's just hitting them again. Um, I, I have this theory uh, that when you invite a person uh, up on stage, it's like inviting them into your house. If I invited you to the house and then, uh, you know, made you feel embarrassed or small or little, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a jerk. And I don't want to be a jerk. And so when I invite you to my house, I treat you well. Uh, I make sure you're comfortable. I make sure that uh, uh, you feel safe. And then we do something fun together. And uh, when it's done, I walk you to the door and I say thank you and good night. Uh, I don't stand in the center of the living room and say goodbye and watch you leave and try to find your way through the living room and to the back door and to get out of my house. And so often I see magicians that are finished. That. Thanks, give them a big round of applause. And they just stand center stage. Uh, I made it a practice when I worked on Disney, which was a huge stage. And the Norwegian cruise, ladies, uh, cruise ships, huge stages. I would walk the people all the way down to the steps and generally down the steps uh, before I, I, I gave them one more round of applause and then raced back to get the center stage. Yes, it does throw off the rhythm to show some but it makes you a better person. And when you're a better person, your show will be better. So, uh, boy, that's a lot of ways to go for uh, one there. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, when can we wish stuff? Oh, I would like to see a card trick. Uh, in the future, I will, I'll do um, a make a request video. How about that? I'll do an entire video where you make a request of what you want to see and I'll try to, try to do it. Does that sound like a deal? Thomas Kruger? Uh, but a card trick. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, this is cool. Uh, I just thought of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare this right in front of you because I did not uh, know that this was gonna happen, and I did not prepare a card trick, and I don't want to do a pick a card trick or anything like that. So I'm gonna do something interesting. I think this will work on here. Look, I am folding the card into three sections. Do you see that? Three sections. Then I'm gonna fold it in half. Uh, that's in half. It's very good. And then I'm gonna fold each of the halves into themselves. Uh, so that they'll be in quarters uh, like this. Very good. Now for the other side, exactly the same. Uh, that'll be in quarters like that. Uh, once this is in quarters, I am now going to unfold it and uh, uh, give it a tear. I'm making a trap door, just in case you're unaware. Uh, this is the trap door in a playing card. Can you see that? It's a little trap door in a playing card. Um, this is the trap door. And right now the playing card is facing down. It's not facing up, it's facing down. Up would be uh, with the indexes facing towards the sky, uh, down is facing down. If I fold the bottom in like this, then I fold the side in, and I fold the other side in, and I fold the bottom under, and then I unfold the bottom uh, one more fold uh, just like this, and then I unfold the sides uh, just like this, uh, and then I unfold the top uh, just uh, like uh, this, I will have, what did I do there? I will have the card uh, facing down. Yeah, <laughs> it's very difficult to do this. I never thought about this. It's usually done uh, with a spectator holding it right here. Hey, I'll do it like this. This could work. Um, oh, I never tried this. Oh, that's good. I look like a goof. Fold in, fold in, fold in, fold in, fold up, fold up. Card is just turned up. Let's do it again just so you can see. Card is now facing down. It's important to know. Card is facing down. The uh, face of the card is facing down. Then I hold this, hold that, hold this, hold that, hold this, and like that. And the card is now facing up. I think this is a really cool little puzzle. It's a card trick. See, and uh, you can try it. Uh, see if you can do it. If you can do this, uh, put the comment uh, down below that you can do this. Uh, if you want, you can make a goofy video and you can post it and I will go watch your video. Uh, I think we have time to do one more question and then I got to kind of uh, question. 
Uh, oh, that's uh, Best Fools. So have I gone through them all? I've got one there. And uh, question is, were you always a magician? Has it always been your job? Or did you use to work in another field, like special delivery or something? Um, yeah, uh, this has not been uh, my primary job. Uh, my first job ever uh, was building potato boxes. Uh, I was like uh, 14 years of age, and I assembled potato boxes. They would bring big pickup trucks full of slats of wood, and you would bang them together and make boxes that house potatoes. And I got like a, a nickel for every box I made, uh, so I'd make, you know, a couple of dollars a day banging boxes together. That was exciting. And then I worked at, um, oh, I worked at Pizza Delight. Uh, Mrs. Manderson was my uh, uh, boss. And I was working there before I was 16 years of age because I was working under my brother's name. Now, that's a story for another time. Um, from Pizza Delight, I moved to um, Victoria. And there I worked for Pizza Pyman, uh, The Lantern House, and uh, Pizza World all at the same time because I was an expert at pizzas. Uh, and then uh, um, I... Uh, narrowed it down till I was working for Lantern House Pizza, uh, where I learned to be uh, a broiler cook. And uh, I, I made uh, steaks and uh, chicken Kiev and things like that, and uh, still made pizza and lasagnas and stuff. And then I um, I got a job working at uh, Rattenbury's Restaurant. Uh, Rattenbury's was this uh, uh, very upscale restaurant. Uh, Rattenbury was the name of a famous architect in Victoria, and he created the Crystal Gardens. And uh, there I was, uh, uh, I started as a prep cook, and a prep cook to a line cook. Uh, I even got to be a sous chef for a very short period of time and a chef for a couple of days until I went insane and that, that was not for me. Uh, I had no interest in doing any of that. Uh, cooking was cool, uh, but it was not my calling. I was doing it because it was something I could do and I was good at. Uh, not great, but good at. And then I got a job working for Northwest Biological and Chemical Laboratories. Uh, and there I... Uh, I uh, packed dead animals into um, uh, plastic buckets. Yep, I uh, I worked with uh, all the uh, 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 fetal pigs that uh, people dissected uh, back in the day, uh, and frogs, and uh, all that, and uh, all the chemical supplies uh, from hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, uh, uh, mercury. Um, I bottled that stuff and shipped it, and uh, human remains made into skeletal forms for uh, scientific purposes and uh, uh, coloring books and textbooks and uh, uh, test tubes and anything else uh, that you ever had in your high school uh, for your science class. Uh, I packaged them in boxes and shipped them. I worked in the mailroom. Uh, but a friend, Michael McFadden, who worked there was very cool and helped teach me about printing. And uh, he had an ABDIC uh, 40 uh, printer. And uh, uh, he taught me how to make metal plates and how to actually run the press. And I, I got to print stuff. And they, we printed the catalog in-house. Uh, it was always a fun time. Everybody collating. Well, he put them together. Perfect bound. And yeah, it was, it was a whole different world. Um, I lost touch with almost everybody from uh, Northwest Labs. But uh, I still have fond memories of people like Gary and Jim and uh, Stan. And, of course, Michael. Michael actually turned up, uh, brought his whole family to see my show at Hidden Wonders. Uh, that was really cool and maybe someone on this will uh, see this video and they'll go hey I worked at Northwest Labs or know somebody and um, uh, they'll uh, hook up uh, I got the job uh, by making an application that was different than everybody else it was a picture of me uh, floating uh, a girl in the air uh, and uh, uh, the boss's name was uh, Dick Stratton and uh, he told Eric who was in charge of hiring uh, to bring me in for the interview and everybody else was far more qualified than me uh, that uh, I wasn't very good at science at all uh, but uh, uh, but they took me on and uh, that was really cool so those were all the jobs I had uh, in between I did framing uh, and roofing and uh, I studied uh, electronics for uh, wiring houses uh, at uh, Camosun College and I did a, I did a lot of things but uh, my entire life all I dreamed of was being a magician and now uh, that I own my theater uh, I do carpentry and electrical and plumbing and uh, marketing and uh, website development and uh, and some magic tricks too yeah um Wow. Uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, stop the video and we're going to uh, uh, set up to uh, uh, do the random. And then whoever that is, that'll be the congratulations. Uh, give me a minute. I'll be right back and we'll see who it is.
And there's our winner. Our winner is Mark F. That's all it is. Mark F. That's not a lot to go off. His comment was, Sean, I love your magic. It's always so clean and you make it look effortless. I am baffled how you do your tricks. Would love to learn how to do your special delivery envelope. There was like over 117 uh, names. I used this thing called commentpicker.com. Uh, congratulations to Mark F. Mark F., you need to contact me. You can find me on my websites. It's easy to find me. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, or you can go to magicchampion.com, 1C, and find me there, or hiddenwonders.show, or hiddenwonders.ca, or vancouvermagictheater.com. There are a thousand ways to find me, but Mark F., it's your job to find me. I'm going to give you today is september 16th i'll give you until the end of the month uh, to contact me and uh, if you do i will send you the t-shirt but you need to contact me so i have a mailing address and i will send you the t-shirt uh, postage paid everything uh, to congratulate you if after uh, september 30th you haven't replied i'm going to give the gift to somebody else because the last time uh it took a long time uh, to get the gift but it did it finally arrived and i'm going to look for the picture and put it uh, uh on here uh in the credits at the end here i will put the picture uh of uh raymond uh who uh, Raimondo, yeah who got his um, uh backpack i had a society of american magicians backpack and he took pictures of him and his daughter on the beach using it it was so cool um uh, yeah so we'll put those at the end. Uh, that went all the way. Uh, I wish my memory was better on this part, but I've been tired now. I think it was to Portugal is where it went to. And uh, uh, it took a little while to get in touch with them, but I did. Okay, uh, so this video, a little different than most. A little bit of therapy, keeping my head uh, occupied so that uh, I don't think about... You know, if you've got people in your life that you really love and cherish, uh, spend some time with them. And uh, just because people don't uh, tell you they're not doing well doesn't mean they aren't. And, uh, uh, yeah, this last month was suicide prevention month. Uh, if, you, if I, I've lost a lot of friends to suicide and, um, uh, and I know a lot of friends uh, who have lost other friends to suicide. Uh, if, if, if you're having a hard time, uh, there are professional people to reach out to. I would say reach out to me, but I'm not professional and I'm not knowing what to say. But if you can't talk to a professional and you need to talk to somebody, um, I'll be there for you, uh, but I'm going to be telling you to go talk to a professional, seek help. Uh, not everybody's happy all the time. I know I give the impression I'm just joyful, and uh, but but I'm not. I, I put on a face uh, to perform, and uh, and there are times when uh, privately life ain't as great as it should be, and uh, that's okay. It's okay not to be okay. Uh, yeah. So that's my therapy for today. Uh, thanks very much for watching the video. Hey, if you uh, like this, like, subscribe, share, uh, tell your friends. Uh, to end this off, um, one more special ask from you. I'm starting a project. Uh, we've been working on it actually for almost two years, but I'm starting to announce or talk more about it. I've talked a little bit on the channel, uh, but now uh, we're, we're, we're getting ready. We're about to do a Kickstarter uh, in the middle of October. Um, I need your help. Uh, I'd love you to sign up for a mailing list uh, just so you know what's going on. Uh, there's no financial obligation. Uh, later, we're going to have a Kickstarter. In the Kickstarter, there'll be all sorts of cool things like an opportunity to uh, uh, come have dinner with me like at the Magic Castle or I'll come to your house and do a magic show. Those are perks we're going to offer. I'm also going to produce a very special deck of cards just for the film project. Uh, and the only way they'll get them is through the film project. Um, the film is called Lost in the Shuffle, and you should visit lostintheshuffle.film. Lostintheshuffle.film. Uh, at the bottom of the page is a place to uh, register uh, to be on the mailing list. Uh, we're going to give away prizes uh, for people on the mailing list, uh, like my Hidden Wonder Souvenir Coins. Uh, we're going to give a, away a whole bunch of these uh, to a luck, lot of lucky winners. Um, so uh, uh, all the incentive. I have nearly 47,000 subscribers on uh, YouTube now. And if just 10% of you were to subscribe uh, or register to uh, get emails, uh, you would make my heart sore. Uh, but I'll be happy if even 1% of you do. Okay. Uh, now I'm ending this. Uh, keep well, keep busy, and most of all, be happy. Thanks for listening to me rant, and we'll see you again uh, just as soon as this video hits 3,000 views. Might be tough. It's a long video.